We're modeling a precise mechanical part using Fusion's powerful sketching tools, constraints, construction geometry, and full parametric control. If you're coming from another CAD platform, see how Fusion streamlines the workflow from sketch to solid, starting right on the horizontal construction plane. Keyboard shortcuts appear in the bottom left corner. We'll start with a center diameter circle placed at the origin of the Fusion canvas. Follow along with my 24 mm dimension or use your own. Next, I'm adding another circle, this one at 42 mm, to create a closed blue profile between the two. Now add another circle. This will define the larger end of the 3D model. Don't worry about its exact position just yet. Start by setting the diameter to 36 mm, then use a dimension to set the distance between the centers of the two circles to 100 mm. The right sketch, the blue one, automatically updates when we add the new dimension. The left circle is black, meaning it's fully constrained and locked in place. I'm just moving the dimension to clear some space. We'll be adding more geometry between the two circles, with the second one on the right side set to a diameter of 64 mm. You can also take this chance to reposition the dimensions around your circles, making them easier to read and select later if you need to make changes. Next, we want to lock the two circles on the right so they stay in place as we continue. I'll use the fix constraint to do that. Now we'll create a line that's tangent to both circles. Instead of trying to place it perfectly, just sketch a line and apply the tangent constraint to one of the circles. Fusion often adds automatic constraints like vertical or horizontal alignment, but we don't need those here. So delete them before applying a second tangent constraint between the line and the other circle. We want the same setup on the opposite side. I'm adding a short construction line to use as a mirror line. Then I'll trim the sketch line we just made and use the mirror command to reflect it to the other side. This workflow gives us identical lines on both sides. Since the sketch drives the 3D geometry, it also makes parametric updates easier. Any future changes only need to be made to the original line and Fusion will automatically update the mirrored side through the timeline. The sketch looks good, and we'll use it to drive the 3D solid body. Before moving on, constrain the last blue line with a tangent constraint to fully define the sketch. Constraining sketches is good modeling practice. It makes your design easier to update and avoids unexpected changes. You can save time by jumping straight into the extrude command without closing the sketch. Extrude the first part to 24 mm if you are following my dimensions. If the sketch was automatically hidden, turn its visibility back on. Continue with the other circle and extrude it to 36 mm. With both circles extruded, move on to the connecting section in the middle. Use the extrude command again and set the operation to join to merge it with the existing 3D geometry. Next, we'll work on the strengthening part in the middle. Start with a simple sketch on the vertical construction plane that's already centered on the model. You don't need to hide any geometry, just Press and hold the left mouse button, then choose the construction plane from the small selection menu that appears. To speed things up and ensure the sketch is correctly positioned, project the underlying 3D geometry onto the sketch plane. The projected lines appear in purple, indicating they are linked. These lines will update automatically if you modify the 3D model or its underlying sketch. Now it's easy to sketch between the projected endpoints.
you should end up with a fully constrained, closed profile that looks like this. Since your sketch is centrally positioned, change the direction setting to symmetric. Pay attention to the measurement setting as it determines whether you extrude half or the full length when adding your dimension. I leave it at 6 mm and half length, meaning the total thickness is 12 mm. Keep the new body operation as this part is separate from the other two. Adjust the gap by extruding the body into the other part, then set the operation to join. Use the zoom and orbit tools to reposition yourself and repeat the process on the other side. Ensure you select both parts from the extrude half-length operation before finalizing the join operation. Take a moment to check your model from different angles and make sure everything looks good before we move on to the final touches and create a drawing. Now, place your sketch on the top face of your solid body. Zoom in for better accuracy, then select the center rectangle tool. It's a simple and effective choice here. you'll find the exact center where the red axis crosses the body. Draw the rectangle in any size for now. You can dimension it afterward. Set the length to 10 mm and the width to 6 mm. I forgot to fully constrain the sketch at this point because I was eager to jump into the extrude command. Go ahead and use the extrude cut operation to cut all the way to the bottom of the solid. This way, the cut will update automatically if we ever change the thickness of the solid body later on. This is a great time to save your project. We're done in the design workspace and about to explore some amazing options in the drawing workspace. To wrap things up, I'll also share a video recommendation, the project that inspired this tutorial. It's been viewed over 3 million times. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that workflow and how it compares to what you can create using Fusion. Fusion offers both automatic and manual drawing tools. In this tutorial, I'll create a manual drawing that includes some automated elements. We'll leave the other settings as they are for now. As you can see, Fusion gives you a lot of flexibility. Start by placing a base view on your drawing. From my experience working with both AutoCAD and Revit over the years, I find creating drawings in Fusion much easier. One thing to note is that the drawing is created in a separate file from your design. Changing the scale is straightforward and style settings automatically update once the base view is placed. Even after confirming the view, you can easily reposition it. And from here, there are plenty of options to continue building your drawing. Next, place a projected view. It will inherit the settings from your base view. Reposition the views to keep your drawing clean and easy to read. Adding manual dimensions is just as simple as it is in the design workspace, but what's even more exciting is the Auto Dimension feature. When you click the Auto Dimension button, Fusion suggests different dimension sets that you can customize. You can also adjust the density to control how detailed each group of dimensions is. There's a lot more you can do in the drawing workspace but this should serve as a solid introduction. That wraps up this Fusion tutorial. I've linked the original CAD tutorial viewed over 3 million times that inspired this video, along with the subscription button. It's a risk-free way to stay updated with future CAD tutorials from my YouTube channel, The Maker Letters. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.